Uh, you know my philosophy, and that's not to, uh, uh, well, oh, let me rephrase that. My philosophy is to use everyday items to make ice cream. It keeps your cost down. It keeps your flavor more familiar to the public. I think when they can taste in your ice cream what they've been used to tasting, like an Oreo cookie, a real Oreo cookie, or real peanut butter. Or, I was in the supermarket last week, it's a true story, and I was looking around, as I always do, for stuff to make ice cream out of, which is, if you've read my book, uh, just to another shameless plug, it says right on the cover, uh, make incredible ice cream without buying jugs, cans, or jars of flavoring or coloring, go supermarketing. And that's what I believe in. And I think in the supermarket, whether it's an American supermarket, Asian, Mexican, Latin, whatever, you can find incredible stuff for desserts. So the other day I was walking through uh, Walmart, actually, and I came across their version of no-bake cheesecake. So I figured, cheesecake ice cream, that's got to work. And the, the uh, opportunities are endless. So this box was $1.88. This box was $2.18. This is the Jell-O brand. So normally, I would buy this. But I splurged, and I went for the good stuff. I have since tried both, and they're both exactly the same. They're fine. Now, the trick is creating a recipe. That's, that's what people are a little afraid of. Uh, and obviously, another shameless plug, I run a boot camp. One of the things that we do is show you how to create a recipe. It's very important. So here I am with a box of cheesecake uh, dessert by Jell-O, a no-bake mix, and I've got to turn this into ice cream. So, upon opening the box, isn't this interesting? Fascinating. Upon opening the box, I find two packets. Uh, you can guess what they are, right? One is the cheesecake mix, one is the crust. So, what I did, without a scissor nearby, is I opened them both up, And I stuck my little finger in to see if it indeed tasted like cheesecake. And surprisingly enough, it does. So I took this, and in a small sample, uh, uh, creating a recipe is a little more complex, but I figure it out, and it's very, it's simple once you know how to do it. Uh, but I poured the cheesecake mix and the crust mix in there. And then you can use, uh, where am I off, over here? Uh, okay. So from the side, you hear me saying that we're gonna put up a few shelves now. No, just kidding. What we're gonna do, I started out with a food processor. I bartered ice cream for a KitchenAid. Uh, from one of my customers, and that worked well. And then I decided to be a purist, and I went with um, hand whisks. And I'm a gadget kind of guy, so hand whisks, they're beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful hand whisks out there, and I bought good ones. And then my arms started to get tired, so a friend of mine gave me this idea, and it seems to work pretty well. Where do we plug into? Uh, there should be a... Plug right there for you. Under here? Try up top. A ah, box. okay, Colored got box. it, got it. And if you go to Home Depot, <laughs> these are paint mixers. They're stainless steel paint mixers. And if you just cut them down a little bit, they attach to any drill. <laughs> In the life, great. And now, you can mix up in a few seconds what used to take me a while and kill my arm. And there it is. Kind of cool. And there it is. So it's a $3 paint mixer in Home Depot. So we have uh, 
I'll give you the recipe for this. We're using uh, seven quarts of mix. And actually, since we're using seven quarts, we're going to add a little more of the cheesecake mix because my recipe calls for five. Steve asked that I do seven, so we'll add a little more of this. And what we'll add is probably half as much because five to seven, right? Are we close? Is this an oil painting or an audience here? <laughs> so we'll add a little more. Uh, and usually I'm a measure freak. Um, these are, what, four ounces? Three and a half ounces. Three and a half ounces. So we're going to add three and a half and seven. I like the way we measure, Steve. <laughs> it all comes out approximate. And don't worry about... Uh, uh, mixing it up too thoroughly because Steve's machines uh, are ridiculous in that they do all the work for you. Uh, the chocolate chips, by the way, uh, one of the things uh, Rod did was ask about putting the chips in. It's actually better to put them in the machine because now the machine will make you all different sized chips, which in a homemade ice cream, I think people want to see that rather than every chip be the same size. And by the way, to clean it is amazing. Just drill it under water in the sink and you're there. Life's great. So uh, all of my ice creams, uh, certainly all the ones in the book and all the ones I still make have basically three ingredients and that's it. Uh, and one of the ingredients is obviously uh, the ice cream mix. Now when you pour and mix, if you've got two things like this, just because the nature of the machine, pour in the purer one first so this stuff doesn't sit on the bottom before you start mixing it. Just minor, but it helps. And of course, always make sure you have a barrel under here. So this is the 12 quart? Yes. Okay, we're adding it into the 12 quart. This is pure mix right here. Only because I didn't have a container big enough to hold everything and make it easier. Uh, Get yourself some of these and they can squeeze so that pouring isn't as messy as normal. So when you're adding this, now what I do is I turn the machine on as I'm adding this. So again, it, it starts mixing it right away. Why did you bother blending it before you put it in the machine? Isn't the machine well, it's, the machine will, but it's a powder, and any help you can give it is better. Okay. Uh, I also think I save a little on electricity by doing it by hand before I add it in the machine. I just don't want anything gumming up the machine at all. Uh, it'll blend concrete uh, with enough time. What speed do you want this on? About I don't have one of these on my Emory Thompson, so I'm roughly always... Roughly 170. 170 for premium ice cream. Give or take. Give or take what? Five. Okay, so let's go to 170, give or take nothing. <coughs> His next version, you'll be able to just press in the number you want. Maybe I'll <laughs> press in the flavor you want. There you go. So now we're adding this mixture of uh, cheesecake mix. and 10% uh, ice cream mix. And I've always used 10%. Okay, we're good there. Now, obviously, if it's cheesecake, everybody has a favorite kind of cheesecake instead of plain, so you can make cherry cheesecake, strawberry, blueberry, you can make anything. At the store, I started to make turtle cheesecake. 
uh, which is this cheesecake ice cream with caramel and fudge through it, and it's really a good seller. Uh, today we're going to make cherry cheesecake. And I also bought Smucker's, which is as pure as you can get in the store, and good stuff. And I also brought a little of the juice. At, in the store, I, I make ice cream with uh, fresh frozen black cherries. They come in a, one of those bags in the freezer section, and all it is is black cherries with juice. It's no sugar or anything else. So I save the juice from it. And, uh, and I add a little of that just to give it a little more flavor. So we need a small spatula. I say we need a small spatula, and everybody's not rushing here, so... I guess we don't have one. What we'll do is... <laughs> <laughs> easier to make a $1 bill into a... I'll get you a No, I'll I gotta have something spatula. better than that. A bigger job. <laughs> so we'll add... <laughs> oh, who would eat it after that? We'll add just a little flavor, and we'll taste this before we finish it up. Uh, so that the flavor is all there. And we're ready to start our freezing. How many of you, out of the 3,500 people here, how many of you own an Emory Thompson yet? Okay. You know you all will. Uh, it, there's just no substitute. So we'll put this on. And, un and unlike Steve, I don't time it. Uh, I use a forward timer rather than a counting down timer because uh, I just want to know about how long it's been in there. So I'll just check my watch. And uh, okay, it's six minutes of. So, so now we can start making our variegat, as it's called. Uh, and I have a different way to add this into the ice cream, which you'll see. And this is just... Smucker's Cherry Jam. Cherry Preserves. The jam doesn't have the pieces in it, the preserves does. Now what we're going to do to make this smoother and spreadable is we're going to add a little mix. Fascinating. And we'll stir it up. You'll get to know about how thick you want it. This is pretty, pretty good here. All right, now we're ready to do that. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Yeah. Absolutely. Repeat the question. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the drill bit for health inspectors. Uh, it's stainless steel. I sterilize it uh, just like Steve sterilizes everything else. I haven't had a problem. Uh, I get inspected often, no problem. Uh, it may not be NSF because it's not an NSF application. It's a paint uh, mixer, but it's all stainless steel. And if you, you know, just like this spoon I used, it's not NSF approved. It's a spoon. Uh, so I don't think you'll have a problem. If, 
Yes. If you didn't want to do it that way, you could go to the professional chef and buy a mixer for about two hundred dollars. So or you can use a whisk. Or you or can a use a whisk. But this is a fun idea, and it works well. Go ahead, ask. No, no, I was just going to say that you can use an immersion blender too. It's the same thing, basically. Yes, that's right. An immersion blender, right, <laughs> right. Uh, whatever works. I just I do this so often. I make ice cream pretty much every other day, and I'm making oh. 30 gallons every other day and I use a lot of you know whisking and my hand hurts you know my arm gets tired my hands cramp up so this is just another tip uh, those of you who who will get to work with me you'll have hundreds of these tips and I think they're great they I wish I had known them in the beginning but I'm not the brightest guy I learned by my mistakes uh, just like on this thing here get a piece of that rubberized uh, draw liner you know, and just cut a, a strip right across there and then nothing will slide around like it does here. I use those on top, I use it up here uh, for my, I always keep a, a spatula and a plastic container up there <laughs> uh, so that when I'm moving this away I replace it and the drips, the drippage is a minimum. Jeff, tell people how you started the business because you didn't start with the uh, 24 quart. No, I started with a, uh, actually I, I came here, sat in the chair right where that gentleman is over there, about 35 rows up for those of you who aren't here. And uh, I watched Steve make ice cream, just like you all are. And uh, probably like you all, I left here saying I can do better. Uh, I can make better ice cream than that. Uh, in no difference to him, he's a machine maker and he makes the world's finest machine. There's just no argument about that. Well, I thought I could make better ice cream. So, I bought a countertop unit. Uh, Not that one, the, C, the next one over there. This one, that's right, a countertop unit. And uh, I put it, I had it installed in my kitchen. The truck comes, the lift gate goes down, the guy wheels it in and I realize I can't plug it in. <laughs> It's 220. So I had called up an electrician. I had them put a 220 line in my kitchen. I bought a tarp. I covered the entire floor, taped it around, and I started experimenting. Uh, I bought all the books, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't care for the, the the method that they used. So I went shopping, and I started buying uh, things in the supermarket: peanut butter. Uh, Oreos, uh, all sorts of stuff. And, uh, and then I started making ice cream. Uh, now, it happened to have been in December a few years ago, and the first thing, one of the first things I started experimenting with was champagne, because New Year's Eve was approaching. Well, I came up with a champagne ice cream uh, that is ridiculously good. And uh, we were invited to a New Year's Eve party, and I brought a three-gallon tub of champagne ice cream. And it just, it was an incredible hit. And I knew right then that I can be in the business. Uh, so I perfected the formula on that. I went from there to wines. I use wines. I use uh, uh, liqueurs. Uh, that's why it's an adult ice cream store. Uh, and then also I made other things, I, uh, I, I make the world's best coconut ice cream from supermarket products uh, with real coconut. And it's just ridiculous. Now I added uh, our own homemade fudge swirl to it and it became Mounds Bar. Uh, so anyway, we've got uh, at any time 35, 32, 35 flavors of homemade ice cream all the time. About half of them are adult flavors, half of them aren't. Uh, and when I started, uh, I took Steve's advice, although he doesn't mention this anymore, but Steve used to tell you that you should go and market your product to restaurants, hotels, country clubs. So that's what I did. Uh, from my kitchen, I moved into a room in the back of a gym. It was eight feet by 10 feet. And you had to walk through the gym to get to my little room. And I had a sink, now this is a true story, I had a dental sink. It was nine inches by nine inches square. That was my sink. Uh, and I had the ice cream machine and a refrigerator freezer that I bought at a flea market. And I took my product and I went to restaurants. 
and they loved it. And they said, yes, we'll take it, we'll serve it. So I, I built up an account of, say, five restaurants, five popular restaurants. Uh, most of them were Italian. Uh, so one was a chicken wing place, uh, popular, uh, but the Italian restaurants. And, uh, and then my job was to keep them filled in. So I would give them, say, three flavors each, and three times a week I would go around and check the product to see if they needed more. Well, don't you know that every time I went to check the product, uh, it had frost on it, the covers weren't on it, the, the scoop was laying there looking very bad. They just weren't taking care of it because the servers were uh, younger girls or guys and they didn't care, they didn't know how to handle ice cream. And I was getting very discouraged because my product was being ruined. I would take out the frosty one, put a new one in at my expense because, you know, you can't charge them for it. So after about a month of that, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I took, I closed all the accounts, I took all the ice cream out. And here I am in an eight foot by 10 foot room. You hear that? You can almost tell when it's ready. It's slapping against the sides. Of the and it's cover. almost ready. So then I figured out, well, I've got this investment in a machine. I'm paying uh, $400 a month for this room in the back of a gym. And uh, I better make some money. So uh, word of mouth was spreading because I was giving everybody in the gym ice cream to take home. And people were realizing I was there. And I put a sign out front, one of those sandwich signs. I put it on the street uh, that we have ice cream. And people started coming in. Uh, this is something that you'll get to know how to do. It's, it's, it's just feel. Now, in my opinion, if you let it go 45 seconds too long, the ice cream's done. It's, you dump it and you start over. It's no good. It tastes like butter. I'd rather have it a little softer. Steve likes it a little harder. <laughs> Let's not go there. So what he's right is when it breaks, See, it's starting to break when it's a good, firm break. <laughs> this very sexual ice cream we're making here. When it's a good, firm break, nice and hard, it's ready to work, to work with. Uh, okay, I'll continue the story. I don't want the ice cream to, uh, to go bad. So my method of folding in, uh, I guess we both come to the same ending, but my method's a little different. Jeff, would you want a timer on the machine that would shut the machine off at a specific time every time? No, you can't. It's not. A, it's not science. It's art. I mean, to me, anyway, I couldn't do that. Why? You're thinking of doing that? No. Uh, it's just that uh, other manufacturers don't realize that when you go changing the sugar content of the product, it changes the freezing. Well, time. and the time of day, the humidity in the room, how many people are in the room, uh, your body temperature, everything changes it. Okay, we're going to make, uh, I need one more container. Uh, let's use a gelato pan so people can ah, good see idea. that. Good idea. Okay, we are ready to go here. Almost. So here I am in a 10 foot by 8 foot room. People are walking through the gym to buy ice cream cones and little dishes of ice cream that I was selling for uh, three prices, $2, $3, and $5. You can guess what I sold the most of. And that wasn't cutting it. So, so I decided to, uh, uh, it was pretty good traffic coming through the gym to my little room there. Uh, so I asked the landlord, can I have the front so I have a door to my little ice cream business? And he did, he uh, doubled my rent. I went from 400 to $800. And he gave me the two doors, seven feet back, and I had a counter. And that was my store. It was seven feet from the door to me, and I had the room in the back to make product. Now I gotta tell you, this is not on a main street. This is off the beaten path, and we'll get into that in a minute. It's one of the notes I made before when the guys were talking. 
Okay, we are ready to roll. It's exciting, isn't it? Okay, so first you turn off the refrigeration, and then you let her rip. Cheesecake ice cream. And now I take this, uh, can't remember, you can stand up again, and I simply oh, pour it on the top. And then you fold. Uh, four folds is usually good on it. And these bowl, these things for squeezing are great because as you squeeze it, you're going to get a beautiful ribbon of your variegat or whatever I don't know what it's called in there. Swirl. And then your swirl, and that's. What it'll look like. Beautiful. So that when it freezes, it's great. And it took me two years to figure out how to do that. It, I'm not kidding. It took me two years. I didn't know how to do it. So anyway, and then obviously you do it again. And that's what I say you'll learn how thin or thick you like it. And then you give it a stir, a fold, sorry. And same thing, you squeeze, and it creates a beautiful ribbon. And that way, everybody who eats it gets a pretty good share of the flavor. And that's that. Should we taste it? You bet. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, just remember, the whole thing is, it's a very simple business. It's not an easy business, but it's very simple. Come on up. Uh, don't we have a big spoon or something? I got And obviously you can add any flavor you want. Sammy, come here girl.